doing that. Drum roll, please. What are we doing? Oh yeah. Drum roll, please. Today we're doing an experiment. That's right. We're looking at experiment 5.2 today titled solubility of ionic compounds and polar covalent and purely covalent compounds. It's a really interesting one and you're going to need some supplies. The first thing you're going to need is two test tubes. Now, you don't need to use test tubes if you don't have them. Some thin glasses will work, but if you have test tubes, those will work the best. Next, you might want a funnel. This just makes your life a little bit easier. And you're also going to want some table salt. You see I've already measured out some on this watch glass here. It doesn't have to be exact. Next, you're going to need some vegetable oil as well as some water. And as always, Safety goggles. Once you've collected your supplies, we're ready to get into the experiment. The first step of this experiment is to take two of your test tubes here and you're just going to set them up straight. I'm using this handy test tube holder. After you do that, you're going to want to take your table salt and I'm going to use my funnel so I don't spill any and just put enough table salt in to cover the bottom of your test tube. You don't need a lot. Put them in both test tubes. After you've covered both test tubes with a little bit of salt, you're going to want to take some of your water and fill one test tube three-fourths of the way up. Like I said before, it doesn't have to be exact. Just estimate it. Say about right there is good. Now get your vegetable oil and in the next beaker, fill that one three-fourths of the way up as well. Once you have both test tubes filled about three-fourths of the way up with the liquid that we talked about, you're going to want to take your thumb, cover the top really tight, and shake it. Give it vigorous shakes and shake it for several minutes. I'm not going to make you wait, so we'll skip to where I'm done. After you're done with the water test tube, do the same thing with... <laughs> in both tubes for about a minute, let them sit in their holders for another minute. After you've let them sit, all you have to do is observe. Let's take a look at the water glass first. You'll see if you look closely that all the salt has actually dissolved into the water and there is none left sitting at the bottom. Take a look at the oil tube, however, you'll see that all the salt is still at the bottom and none of it has dissolved. Now, you may be wondering, why did the table salt dissolve in the water, but not in the vegetable oil? Well, let me tell you. Table salt, as we have learned, is an ionic compound. Therefore, we know that it is composed of ions which possess electrical charge. Water, since it is polar, also has charges in it, even if they're just partial charges. Vegetable oil, as we have learned before, is purely covalent. That means it has no electrical charge at all. Thus, since it has no electrical charges, it, it cannot interact and dissolve with the table salt. That's all for today. Have fun. Ta-ta!